Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to The Why Show. I am your host, Adina Wingfield, for today's segment. Uh, we'll have Trent Smith and Gail Daffler also with us from Goodwill Easter Seals, Miami Valley. Also joining us via Zoom are Justine Bauer of Goodwill Easter Seals, Tamara Cantrell, and Michael Mann, both with Uvidop. They will all be available to facilitate during the chat. But before we begin our segment, we'd like to share with you all, this is a judgment-free zone. We are having a conversation today that helps all of us thrive as we get older. And this is also brought to you by the New Jersey Prevention Network. Today's episode is episode three, valuing cultural and generational diversity. This is such a wonderful topic and we're excited to bring it to you today. For our agenda and activities, we'll have some expected outcomes where we examine diversity among seniors. We're going to define diversity, expanded understanding of culture and diversity. We also want to go over personal experiences with diversity. We'll share a little bit with you all later. We want to understand how our identifications impact our interactions. Mm -hmm. In addition, we'll talk about strangers in a strange land to help us better understand diversity of seniors. In the end, we're gonna challenge assumptions and make ourselves more aware of assumptions about various cultural groups. Our purpose today is to explore ways in which we are a diverse group and develop appreciation for our cultural and generational diversity. So we're gonna talk about expanding understanding of the concepts of culture and diversity, improved ability to name our own cultural identifications, how they impact our values, and the ways we interact with others. We also talk about better understanding of diversity of older adults and the unique needs of different types of older adults. And then we'll talk about the heightened awareness of the assumptions people commonly make about various cultural groups and how they affect interaction. But before we do that, we have a couple of announcements. And so I wanna turn it over to Gail Daffler. Hi everybody. Um, I just wanna invite all of our community members to attend the upcoming DEA Take Back Day. It'll be April the 24th. Our Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley, we will be hosting an event on our grounds, um, which is located at 660 South Main Street in Dayton, Ohio. We have several organizations that will be participating in our spring, it's called the Spring Fling, and they'll be handing out um, fun, at, fun activities for kids and also just, um, just resource bags for our community members. We also have the Dayton Food Bank there as well um, that will be handing out food to our community members. If you have a food bank card, please bring that. And if you don't, please bring a photo ID and at least one proof of re re residency. Um, the organizations that are being re um, represented at the event will be Umadop of Dayton, South Community, East End Community Services, Oak Street Health, our FOA, which means the friends and family of addic people in addiction. Um, our GROW team of Dayton, Ohio. Um, Bright View, Care Source, and the Artemis Center. Uh, we, um, the prevention team here at Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley just wants to thank all the organizations for participating and for supporting another great event. And we hope to, we hope to, um, we hope that everybody is able to bring their medication, clean out their, um, their um, medicine chest, um, look for unused medication, outdated medication, bring those to the event. Um, the last big event that we had was in October of 2019 where we disposed of over 11,000 pounds of medication just in Montgomery County alone. We hope to break that record. So. Any, it could be a small amount of medication, or it could be any size medication, a large amount. Please bring that and, and enjoy the day that we have. Hopefully it's gonna be a nice day outside. Great, thank yeah. you, Gail, for that update on DEA Take Back Day. Mm -hmm. And now we'll turn it over to Trent as we talk about defining diversity in our activity one. 
Absolutely. So um, we are today are defining uh, diversity in this activity. Um, and no age group is more variable in personal background, in physical abilities, in personal lifestyles, financial capabilities, or social needs than today's older adults. Yet, however, everyone over 60 and 65 gets lumped together um, in some same category. So in this activity, what we want to do is identify the attributes uh, we share in, in common and, you know, those that contribute to our, our diversity, okay? So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I, um, well, first of all, I want to make sure you guys have pencil and paper ready for us, or pen and paper ready, um, because we're going to do an activity in a few minutes. But first, I'm going to read this quote that comes from um, our, uh, our the, the program that we have here. Um, and it's called Diversity Is. So diversity is a range of differences that include gender, race, ethnicity, and age. It also includes differences that are not visible, like education, professional background, functional area of expertise, sexual orientation, and religion. The way countries view diversity depends on the cultural values of the people and the range of diversity in the population and the attitudes towards these differences. So I just love this quote. I just think it's a really good quote that, that kind of pulls things together. Um, but um, I, I guess, you know, I, I, it's, it's such a big quote. Are there anything um, that stands out? You know, maybe, Gail, do you have anything in that that really stood out to you? I do, I do. Um, one thing that stood out for me was the countries. We, countries and, and people from different countries have different, like say, traditions, different values. Um, and that might be in, in, within each culture within a country. There's different traditions and different values. Yes. And, and, what, and, and we, when we think about that, that can be a little overwhelming, thinking about how diverse all that can be and having an understanding for that. But what I like at the end of that sentence is the attitudes towards these differences. So if you have an attitude maybe where you're open to understanding and that you're willing to, to, um, to lead that conversation with open ears and an open heart, I think that either you're, you're the acceptance there and then the acceptance for maybe some things that you have that are different right. might also be reciprocated from that person. Right, I love that, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, there's so many other di dimensions of diversity. Um, can you think of some that, that come to mind for you? Oh, my goodness. Well, first thing I'd like to say is diversity is not just black and white. You know, in this climate we're living in, it, there's a lot of division going on, but there's so much inclusion. But when we think about diversity, uh, education stands out to me and how, how um, Many people have decided to go to college and many people didn't. You know, there are technical programs that people go to apprenticeships and that's just fine. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, college, so it's, it's not one size fits all. And so that's the part that stands out to me. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And you know, I, I just, I love how, um, just the feeling in this room is that we embrace them and, you know, yeah. and celebrate the diversity. Um, and it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity to learn about different things and different people. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. um, and so the activity that we're doing today is called the Similarity and Differences Wheel. So what I'd love for you guys to do at home is uh, go ahead and get out a piece of paper. Um, like I said, and, and what I want you to do is I want you to draw a small circle on, on the, um, the page that is big enough to write some things in here, right? And then a bigger circle around it. And um, so we're gonna fill in some of these areas, I think, and try to show how uh, uh, we have different, so such difference in, there's such difference in, in diversities amongst us, but at the same time, there's so many similarities, right? Um, so we're gonna, let's go ahead and start with similarities. Um, are there some sim similarities that, um, what do we all have in common? What mm. is what do we all have that's the same? What's oh. the same? You know, when I think about commonality, the number one thing I think about is love. We all want to feel love, don't we? 
Yeah. And uh, one more, uh, respect. Yeah. Respect, that is common, that's universal, mm -hmm. to want to feel respected. Absolutely. And, and when I think about that, Trent, I think about we all have it. We all have a sense of belonging, whether that's with our, our family of origin or whether that's with a group of people um, that might be our neighbors. You know, it could be somebody we might um, live near, we go to school with, we work with. Um, right. But having that sense of belonging, I think, is universal for everyone. And, and also, kind of what D Adina was talking about with education, we all have a sense of, like, we want to learn. You mm -hmm. know, whether that's we learn from a book or we learn from school or we learn from each other. You know, but, but we all, we all it, it could be, in probably our things that we want to learn about are a lot different, but we all have that sense where we do want to learn. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, Absol I agree, absolutely. Um, and I, you know, I just, you know, when we think of the similarities, there is so much we have in common um, um, that sometimes our, I think our differences get in the way. And, um, and so, uh, you know, let's take a look at some of those, some of those differences that we have. Mm -hmm. some, what makes us different? What makes us different from each other? Mm -hmm. well, I'll start, Trent. Okay, that'd um, be great. What about our health? You know, when you look at different health ranges, mm -hmm. uh, with people, um, finances, you mm -hmm. know, some people are on fixed incomes, and some mm -hmm. people have plenty of money. I wish I was <laughs> in that group, but someday, someday. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and even religion, but mm -hmm. what are your thoughts, Gail? Uh, and and um, some of us, oh, age is a difference, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, and some of us can be older, but they can be young at heart. You know, some of us could be, you know, younger and very grounded. So uh -huh. there's lots of diversity there with age, uh -huh. um, right. with abilities. Uh -huh. So um, when I think about that, it, maybe we we get around in different ways. Maybe we see things in different ways. We hear things in different ways. Mm -hmm. We talk in different ways. So when I think about that, that that's huge. It's very colorful. Um, and also, um, like sexual orientation, that's something that, um, you know, people have dif differences in that as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. You okay. know what, I have another one that stands out here, it's support, yeah. like a support system. Some people have a huge support system, large families mm -hmm. and all of that, and other people maybe um, have been adopted or just mm -hmm. kind of step out into the world as a single person and, and do what they and still get the mm -hmm. job done, but there's there's a support system difference that we should look at as well. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and as mm -hmm. you know, as we grow older, uh, I think a lot of times that our support systems change. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sometimes you know children move away, or you know sometimes we do. You know, we we lose the support of our family, our parents, or someone might pass away, and we we don't have that in our lives. So, mm -hmm. I think that's a a big difference um, that we ha all have. Um, you know, we just hope that that support comes from a different place for everyone, right? Yeah. Our, our homes are all different, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. you know? yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we could live in an apartment, we could have, you know, have a larger home, we could, it could be in an urban, it could be, mm -hmm. like say, um, out in the country. Um, yeah. So that's right. something where there's lots of differences there for our homes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, and I, you know, when when we're, we talked about, you know, we talked about education earlier, um, and how that can be, you know, that's kind of our our drive to learn, but our different levels of education, people have uh, people have sought out higher levels of education. Of education, some people haven't. Um, um, some people just learn on the job and just know things. So, um, and that's one of those hidden things also that a lot of times that you know we don't know about people, what their education is or anything, and mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes that comes into we, those assumptions that we're going to talk about later. Sometimes mm -hmm. that will yeah. come into that as well. So, um, yeah. um, it's, and when I think of that trend, I think of it, there, there's different ways to learn things. So sometimes mm -hmm. um, somebody might seek, seek out, like say, um, a diploma, mm -hmm. and sometimes people seek out different ways to learn the same information. Yeah. And, and it's their drive, you right. know. It, so it's it's interesting right. where that can go. Right. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, and as we get older, 
we certainly can learn. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, you can teach an old dog new tricks. You sure can. I, you know, right. I went back to school <laughs> when I was when I was older. You know, and 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 got more certifications and still taking classes now. And um, so I think that you know, education is something that um, is again, it can be. It's so universal, but at the same time, um, you know. You can you can try new things and you can learn new things, you know, even at an older age. And I like so. what you said about that. You told a story about that. It was a different time in your life where most college students would go, you know, maybe fresh out of high school. You went mm -hmm. and you were. Did you say you were already married? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In fact, <laughs> that's true. Um, <laughs> I keep going to school, but no, I got married. Um, it, you know, fairly fairly young. I was I was almost twenty two, mm -hmm. um, but I was I got. I didn't go back to school and finish my degree until I think I graduated when I was 29 or 30, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, so that's, um, I was one of those little older people in school, so anyhow. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, we can learn. Mm -hmm. I love yeah, it. Definitely. Definitely. And you, you got me thinking about our Zoom and all of our technology that really, <gasps> that, hello Zoom viewers, and we're, we're thankful that you're here with us today. That's something I know that I didn't know what Zoom was a year ago. And so yep. mm -hmm. learning how to use that and how to share things on Zoom, yeah. learning how to make a PowerPoint and then how to share that on Zoom, it's huge. And so um, being open to that, and I know we're all going through like say, um, just it's, it's a hurdle that we're, that we're, uh, that we're, um, that we're trying to um, get over with learning technology, but I, I am impressed with everybody who is attempting to learn, figure out how to use that Facebook, how do you view things on Facebook Live, yes. you know, how, you know that is huge, and we're 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 making great changes. Yes, and I hope you're having so much fun mm -hmm. with FaceTime. If you have grandchildren or anything mm -hmm. like that, I've been hearing <laughs> great things about that being such a new experience for many people, and, right. and, and really enjoying that. So. Mm -hmm. FaceTime. Absolutely. So talking about personal experiences, could we move and, and share some more with that, with diversity? Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Okay, so now we've talked about what diversity is all about. We will look at, in it as on a more personal level. So um, I want you to think about your personal experiences. How has diverse, diversity affected you? What have you learned from it? What have you been challenged by? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn to our team. And Ms. Trent, I'm turning to you first. Okay. What are some personal experiences that you've had with diversity? How has it shaped you into the person you are today? You know, um, I, I am a military kid. And we, you know, we stationed, we got stationed a lot of places and we got moved around quite a bit. Um, I was lucky enough um, that at one point we were able to go and live um, in overseas in Europe. Um, and during those few years, I was, I was still in elementary school and um, I got to travel and I got to see other cultures. Um, I got to see, hear other languages. Um, you know, unique things. I mean, you know, how we, you know, we talk about, you know, our families and we, how we live is, is unique for all of us. Um, in some cultures, they would have um, completely different meal schedules. Like their big meal would be in the middle of the day where ours is at night. Um, sometimes we would be at one place and uh, like on a, like a vacation and everything closed down mm -hmm. in like from, from like noon until like seven or eight o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And then everything opened up again. So, you know, no one did any shopping or going out to the store during that time. So um, all those things were really uh, enriching experiences for me. Um, and then we, we did move back to the United States, which was wonderful, but that was um, a little unstable when it, cause I would go from school to school. So I was in three different schools in three different years. And one of those, um, I mean, I was down in the South and then I moved up here. And so it was really completely different cultures, even within our country. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I was, I was uh, the new kid and um, had to learn kind of what was going on in the classrooms and, you know, kind of how to meet people. So um, that was uh, uh, a lot of what I was, how I was, how I grew up and how I, I was, I was raised with all those experiences. Mm -hmm. wow. 
How do you feel that diversity challenged you to shape you? Like, what are some things that you learned from that experience? Oh, um, well, uh, you know what? I was the new kid, a lot. I was the new kid. Um, and I think it made me maybe more accepting of that new face and, and uh, it made me more outgoing um, and uh, willing to meet other people. Um, I think that maybe shapes some of my personality. Uh, makes me want to get out and, and be with other people and meet other people. Um, you know, that was a, yeah, that was a, it was a challenge. Um, but I think that a, a good lesson for me is that, is that, you know, welcoming that new person in and, and, um, mm -hmm. um, and it, it also helped me, I think, um, maybe be more open mm -hmm. to other, other people, other opportunities and other, other experiences and, and cultures. So, yeah. Well, thank you, Trent. Oh, you're welcome. So, Zoom participants, I challenge you to write in the chat, how has diversity shaped you and what have you learned from that? So please put that in the chat. Next, we're gonna go to Miss Adina. And Miss Adina, what, can you share some of, the, some, um, some of your experiences with diversity and how has it shaped you? Well, uh, just as an African-American person with some strong Native American roots, I uh, grew up on the west side of Dayton, went to public schools, and uh, just all the kids looked like me, and uh, lots of poverty coming up, but also some opportunities where I became middle class as a family, and um, <clears throat> was able to participate in things like Girl Scouts and church youth group and things like that. And those opportunities led me to open up to different groups of people and uh, my mother really focused on education and making sure that we did our homework and um, put us in band. You know, I played flute and sang. So all of those things helped to uh, just share in the experience of others, uh, push, pushing forward. Um, in my college years, end up in the medical field, and that helped me at the hospital. I, I joined into a diversity committee as I worked with uh, nurses of very, uh, various backgrounds and doctors of various backgrounds and that just helped to shape me even better to um, learn that there are so many things that we have in common as people that we need to look for and sit down and have healthy conversations so that we can have better relationships. So I, I've just had, a, I feel like a broad experience and that helps me to sit here with you all today and do have some courage to even talk in front of people. So I'm just thankful for my journey. Yeah, yeah. so far. Yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I'm like that you, you had you had a lot of situations there. Mm -hmm. So, um, what do you th feel that you valued over the years of all of your experiences with diversity? You know the m music, <laughs> music, music, because it's a universal language, and, and we all love music or some rhythm um, uh, of any kind that can help us to come together uh, on a common ground. So, I love common mm -hmm. ground, and that is music. So, it's been my favorite Great. thing. I we all love music. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, it is universal. It and, is. It, and it's so diverse. And I, I like it being diverse. I like listening to different things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my friends just think I'm stuck in the 80s, but you know, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I okay. like to listen to all kinds of music. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when true. I think about my background, um, I'm like you, Dina. I grew up in um, a small town, and a lot of the faces looked like mine. Mm -hmm. And um, I just remember. Um, um, just to have a few experiences with people of different cultures that would come to our church um, that started to attend our school. And I was very curious. I, was, you just, I wanted to learn more. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned a lot when I finally started going to college. And um, just I remember walking into the first day of, of college and it was like, I'm here. I felt like this sense of relief because I was surrounded by lots of different people from lots of different backgrounds, lots of different, uh, <laughs> um, just lots of different abilities. Um, and that was wonderful to me. It was like, we could have these really open conversations. Um, and I met a really great friend um, one year um, and he shared his experience. He had muscular dystrophy mm -hmm. and he could paint, he yeah. could skydive. He's a, he's a motivational speaker right now, and um, 
he enriched my life so much because he would have these open and honest conversations. He would have these difficult conversations, mm -hmm. you know, and um, he was an open book and that helped me to be brave in conversations with other people. Mm -hmm. So he, just his bravery every day that he showed the world was, was um, my, it was, cha it changed my life. And um, just to, just to see everyone there at the school talking about what they value, talking about their personal experiences, and just to, to understand people, that, that was, it came from a different point of view than myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That really, it, it led me to be a little bit more open because I, I, I thought I was open, but I wasn't as open, was what I thought I was. <laughs> and yeah. so um, that, that was just, it was a life changing. It was life changing. And of course, Miss Dina, you have changed my life. Oh. You know, that was something knowing you and, and hearing your story and your viewpoint, your perceptions of things, mm -hmm. that really opened me up even further so I want you know so when I think about like say diversity it's a lifelong process mm -hmm. of understanding each other and, and um, trying to learn how we can better get along that's right so yeah mm -hmm. I have developed yeah a great appreciation for each other and, mm -hmm. and, and mutual respect yeah, yeah it's absolutely. just so good um, and we learn to embrace each other more about celebrating right. our differences even in the quality skills and knowledge and background that we all bring to the table and when you talk about ability mm -hmm. I just love that especially where we work with goodwill right. um, with many diverse um, backgrounds and people with abilities disabilities of, of, of various sorts but when you say ability it makes me think of when I became a reader writer at Wright State for um, those who could not take their own notes mm -hmm. and it just was an amazing experience to have friendship with somebody that may not be able to walk but doesn't didn't mean they couldn't think Right. They could still think and do, but they may not have been able to use their hands. And so we cannot assume things about people right. just because they can't do certain things. Mm -hmm. um, I had friends who were blind that did mm -hmm. math, oh gosh, in their heads so awesomely. So I, it's just some, some great opportunities to meet different people and Absolutely. have great friendships. So that mm -hmm. you reminded Absolutely. me of a lot right there. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just love how we inspire each other. That, yes. that is something just, because yes. it, it triggers a lot of memories. We all have different experiences. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just having an open, open heart and an open mind to, to them, that, that, yes. that's what makes the difference. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any more personal experiences that you can think of? Um, you know, I just, you know, I just value the cultural differences around us mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, just within a, within a neighborhood, within a school, and going in and, and um, hearing different um, languages spoken. Yeah. Um, or, you know, the, smelling the food that, you know, just, oh my goodness. And, the, and I just think that the differences um, um, that, like, my mother brought into our lives was, um, you know, she introduced food. She introduced yeah. lots of different food, and I was eating exotic foods probably for the most part when I was very young mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I'm so grateful for that you know mm -hmm. for the opportunities to do that and I try to share that in you know I just try to share it with my children and you know they share it with their friends and things like that mm -hmm. so I just think um, for me just um, understanding or, or getting to know other people's cultures um, it's just so rewarding. Mm -hmm. So yeah. true. Absolutely. I want to talk a little bit about age because that's something where when we think about age, and I remember growing up, I used to think, oh, once you hit a certain number, like say 40 or 50, you stop doing certain things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that is something where um, it's, you know, I'm 54 right now, and I'm seeing people who are well into their 70s, well into their 80s. They still go to work every day, and they are still vital every day at work. In fact, a lot of them work harder and are quicker at their jobs than some of the younger people. Wow. Just to see people doing really healthy things like dancing, like our friend Michael, who was on one of the other shows. And, and all the sports he's involved with, his mm -hmm. physical activities, just seeing that, and it's so inspirational. Um, whether it's people writing stories, 
you know, volunteering in the community, you know, so when, when um, you're a certain age, that doesn't mean anything. You can still do whatever you put your heart and soul into. Yeah. And, um, and I'm inspired every day by meeting the, the individuals that we get to meet on the job or in the community mm -hmm. who are out there making a difference. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. that, you know, and we're all making such a difference um, as we age and, and learn from each other. Mm -hmm. But here's, a, here's an exercise I'd like to look mm -hmm. at. There's a slide here with uh, some people on an elevator. Now, everyone, <laughs> this is pre-COVID, okay, for <laughs> sure, because now we know that there probably would only be one person allowed or maybe two on this <laughs> elevator. But this, let's just think back into, I don't know, 2019, the very beginning. Um, <laughs> so these people are on the elevator. And on the, in this lesson, we're, we're, they're strangers in a strange land. Uh, and, and we're all like that sometimes, strangers in a strange land. And we're going to challenge some assumptions. So the theme of this is sometimes we make assumptions based on our beliefs, values, and backgrounds. And we often do it with very little information. Um, mm -hmm. However, making assumptions about others is not always helpful and often can lead to misunderstanding. How many out there have ever been in a misunderstanding? <laughs> hmm? Sometimes you feel like people are committed and you're like, please stop committing to misunderstanding me. I really want to be your friend. But no, anyway, <laughs> it's okay to laugh in this, in this uh, show. It, it, we have fun. But in this activity, we will heighten our awareness of how we all make assumptions about others it would allow us to learn to engage in new social settings with an open mind and think of it as an adventure to learn about others that just may appear differently than us. So as we look at this, uh, you know, when we look at that picture, it's just like, what are they thinking? You know, does somebody, maybe somebody's clutching their purse. We don't know. Maybe somebody's like, hurry up and get me off of here. We all think so differently. You know, some people, some people start conversations on elevators. I try not to, but because <laughs> but anyway, you don't have that long to ride, but I do speak to people. And so everybody's different. You have your social butterflies and, and your personalities are all different. But we're going to talk about a challenge here. And I'm going to give this challenge to Gail. Are you ready, Gail? I'm ready. All right. <laughs> going to the chapel. Wonder what that's about. So it says your 25 year old niece, everybody listen, take this on. Your 25 year old niece has met someone and is contemplating marriage. You give her advice on what she should do. Oh my gosh. So th this, is, this is my assumptions, right, Miss Dina? This is not actually how I'm going to think. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, it's totally up to you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Based on your viewpoint, okay. yes. So this might not be my viewpoint, but these are some assumptions, right? Assumptions. Okay. okay. There we go. Okay. Let's challenge. So uh, an assumption you might have in that situation is you're too young to get married. Mm. Okay. An um, assumption you might have in that situation would be are your finances in line? Are you, do you have enough money to get married and to have a house on, you know, with your husband? Uh -huh. um, an assumption would be, and I just did it, uh -huh. would be you're gonna get married to a man. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so maybe you might get married to a woman, right? True. Right. So an assumption you might have in that situation is that they haven't met, e they haven't known each other very long. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that could be, th those are some of the, the things that people might think. Mm -hmm. And you think that just comes from things you've seen, like maybe with family or just all around you, just some experiences? Right, exactly. Yeah. I, th I think sometimes like you, you learn from your family or you learn from your peers that you're around. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, when I went to, to school, like, I know Trent, you, get, you said you got married when you were younger, yeah. but there was an assumption that if you got married when you were young, like, it was like, what are you doing? Uh -huh. You know, like, uh -huh. it, it wasn't thought of in, yeah. in a positive way. So that was an yeah. assumption that people had. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Hmm. Yeah, and, you know, and I, and I, so I, you know, I think of that situation, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you question that, and I think, well, okay, I was 21, right? and I just about ready to turn 22. I was almost 22. I got married. Um, but, you know, I think that, you know, when you look at someone, you know, maybe, you know, maybe they did have their act together. Maybe, you know, I guess from my personal experience, it's like, okay, you know, maybe they are good. You know, maybe, you know, maybe they've, uh, you know, just gotten through school and they're ready to get, you know, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of kids have graduated from college or something like that, or maybe mm -hmm. gotten you know some kind of degree or into a job. 
um, after high school and they're they're settled and um, you know and I and I would be um, I, I don't know if I would question it so much, but maybe that's just from a personal preference. Mm -hmm. Now I have children, I have daughters too, so I'm not sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> now so she says, well I know them, well, and you know, it depends no, on no. the person. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. So I look at my own situation, like I, I got married on my birthday, strangely, but I was 25 that day, and thinking back, I was so young, thinking about where I am now in my early 40s, going, oh, I may, you know, maybe I could have waited a little longer, but you know, it's been 15 years, so we did okay. But yeah, so, yeah. but but you 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 know, at 25, there are lots of things to think about about where you are. But that's from my perspective. Some people, you know, have already been mature. You know, at 16, they were ready to go then. You never right. know. It depends on the culture, mm -hmm. right? right? The belief system. So right. a lot of lot of different cultures get married way sooner. All right. Anything else on that, ladies? Well, and there's usually a lot of celebration around, um, you know, a, a proposal. Uh -huh. um, so that's something that that's that's assumed. Like people, I think people assume that that'll be the the received in a positive way. Oh, tradition. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. a tradition. Yes, the mm -hmm. man should ask the woman. Hmm. Not mm -hmm. happening anymore as no, much. Right, it's mm -hmm. the other way around <laughs> lately. So we kind of open our mind to the different ways, and that that helps us to receive culture and and generational differences. Because somebody in the old, older generation say, I, "No way, he better mm -hmm. he better ask you." Mm -hmm. So it, it just depends on who they are and how they think. Absolutely. Let's go to another example. It, <laughs> we're going to flip this. Uh, Trent, your 70-year-old 70 grandmother has met someone and is contemplating marriage. You give her advice on what she should do. All right. Again, this can be coming from an assumption, not necessarily my own views. I like that. I like how you put that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's, there could be an assumption that um, they, they're just not, they're not really thinking straight, mm -hmm. right? Maybe... Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, why, why would you, you're all settled in your life and why would you want to get married? And um, I think that, you know, we talked about people being on fixed incomes and, you know, maybe you think, well, you know, is, do they have enough money with the two of them, you know, getting together? And, you know, I don't, you know, wh how would that disrupt their life? How would it disrupt maybe, um, you know, this is the grandmother, how is that gonna, it, how will a new person, um, you know, uh, alter the relationship maybe between, you know, grandmother and granddaughter or great-grandchildren, you know? Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, maybe that's maybe not so celebrated like we were talking about mm -hmm. is someone getting older and getting married. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. I guess that's right. Well, and when I think about that situation, an assumption, well, actually, some people could respond by being really happy, you know, because maybe there's a story behind that, you know, and um, that is something where um, some people might think that there's a reason behind it, mm -hmm. but, but um, it could be a positive reason, it could be a negative reason, but um, that is something that, there could be some assumptions about, like, why are you getting married? But I think sometimes people would just be like, all right, you know, because I think there's assumption about like love and about caring that it kind of ends at a certain age, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think um, people might be really celebrating that, like you have, this is a positive, great thing in your life. Because I think uh, the assumption might be because love stops at a certain time. Mm -hmm. well, we know better, don't we? Right. So yeah, love is throughout our life. That's true. So, so true. Absolutely. Well, let's move on to another example right. and see how we do. Gail, I'm going to start with you again. Okay. okay. <laughs> you have been bowling for years. All right. And your 14 <laughs> year old neighbor says he wants to learn how to bowl. How do you respond? Again, he's 14. 14. Okay. My assumption is my, my, um, this is not what I really think. So, my assumption is my 14 year old neighbor, neighbor, has played football and stopped. He's played baseball and stopped. He's played track and stopped. So is he really gonna follow through on bowling? You know, so that's an assumption right there for a young person where, 
they're just exploring their life, right? And so they're just trying to figure out who they are and what they're about. So I think there's a lot of stopping and starting with for young people, mm -hmm. but sometimes I don't think that they're given that like room to grow because, um, you know, they want to figure out things and, and it's okay if they stop, start and stop things. Right. So that's good. Yeah. It's kind of good to remember when you were young and kind of what you, you thought of. That would be a great mm -hmm. way to meet in the middle and remember mm -hmm. so that you could relate. Yeah. How about right. you? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, you know, I, I think it's wonderful that, that they would want to spend time. I'm making an assumption here mm -hmm. that um, if you've been bowling for years, maybe you're older, maybe you're in your 60s and you've been, this is what you do. And, and maybe this uh, young gentleman is excited to spend time with them mm -hmm. and wants to absorb, you know, all the new experiences and things like that. Um, I'm not, you know, it, it. there's so much information that's missing that mm -hmm. we don't know. Yeah. But people do make assumptions and that's, yeah. the, that's the difficult thing is that they would judge, you know, it's like, well, what's that, what's that little boy? Yeah. Little you kids. Know, what's that young kid yeah. doing? the one hanging out with them. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the assumption would be look, look, um, 14 year olds don't bowl. What are you doing here? Right. 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 Mm -hmm. hmm. True. Right. So those of you on Zoom, you know, think mm -hmm. about the assumptions that you may have made in these activities, in, in this uh, these last few questions. And I have one more, but I'm going to ask. Uh, but just think about that as we go along about how you would react mm -hmm. and some of the things mm -hmm. you could change even with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we go on a new hobby. Trent, you have been bowling for years. and Your 80-year-old mother says she wants to learn how to bowl. How do you respond? Well, you know what? Oh, there, this is so mixed because you just don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, coming from a, um, you know, even from a personal space that with my, my parents, I would be wonderfully happy if my parents or my you know or you know would come out and, and do activities mm -hmm. and I think that'd be great I would worry about that. yeah I would have some some concerns about you know bowling is an activity it's it's not playing cards it's movement it's you know that's that that's a concern but um, mm -hmm. um, you know my just I think maybe maybe an assumption is that is that you know Good. Get out there and go. Yeah. Get out you there know, and go. Get out there and go. Uh -huh. So, I don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. What about you, Gail? How would uh -huh. you take that? Oh my goodness. Okay. So, if I, I have my mom is still active and does great things, I would be really happy if she wanted to go bowling, um, or to do any kind of physical activity. I think that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. You might think about maybe some health conditions, like what Trent would say. Mm -hmm. um, or you might there I'm sure she's been told that she can't do things because she's a certain age or she has a certain health condition um, you know and I um, and I'm sure somebody might say to her mom this is all assumptions here so um, I say to her about um, that you can't do that because um, maybe you, you could go wee bowling but not like you know in the um, mm -hmm. in the big lanes right mm -hmm. um, um, or they might challenge like her and they might say, well, you have to use a five pound ball, ball instead of the, one of the bigger balls, you know, um, because you're, maybe you're not strong enough. Yeah. So I think that, um, you know, and one thing that I, you know, that's one thing where people can figure out what, they, what they're capable of doing. But I think there's a lot of assumptions, like you're gonna hurt yourself, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. and um, you're, not, you're not able to, to do that because you're a certain age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we'll just use my grandma for this example. Mm -hmm. That particular person that's bowling, uh, she driven uh, Meals on Wheels to people, uh, you know, up through age 81. Right. And so um, she could probably bowl pretty fine, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so we just assume sometimes the unknown, we don't know, and we make assumptions about people that are often wrong or made mm -hmm. simply by observing people instead of getting to know them. That's the biggest part, um, even th on Zoom, like having good conversations. So put in the chat, you know, some of the things you would think to, to say, mm -hmm. to get to know someone. Um, don't let the unknown keep you from engaging in the community, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Make new people feel welcome in your community. 
So I hope you all feel welcome in this presentation and, and what we're sharing with you. Um, yeah, we're all in the same boat here. Yeah. So we're all learning and growing at different different stages. Um, so how how did it feel? I mean, how did that? Um, how did you like that uh, exercise? It, well, it maybe challenged my own assumptions. I started, especially when I started thinking about a few things um, different than what I thought of before. Mm -hmm. So it's, it'd be interesting to actually do this activity several times because I think then mm -hmm. you you would uncover some other assumptions that you might have. Because I did that because we were going through practice, and I and then I thought of some other things in in right. some of the areas. Oh, yeah. right. So. I think that just being aware and being open to hearing other mm -hmm. people's viewpoints uh -huh. and that, mm -hmm. that could change how you think about even how you think yeah. about certain things. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll ask this question, what are like roadblocks to positive communication? Uh -oh. I mean, does anybody have anything on that? What's a oh. roadblock? Absolutely. You know, uh, you know, the, the fear of the unknown, maybe the fear of, of, of what they don't, people don't understand. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, and the you know, and not uh, not wanting to ask the questions to clarify, uh -huh. to get through that assumption. You know, um, um, you know, maybe assuming that um, a certain you know family would not be doing that, or a certain age wouldn't be doing that, or age wouldn't be doing that. So I think that um, one of the 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 Encourage to ask those questions yes. and and to um, use your curiosity and know that it's okay to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and you got me thinking, Trent. I think sometimes people fear being wrong, uh -huh. or like fear hurting somebody mm. from their actions or their words. Mm -hmm. And I think that that could be a roadblock that some people might put up because um, that might be a really hard hard lesson to learn mm -hmm. and um, you know have you know just what could I do better you know and how could I open up my ears more and, and be accepting and loving of yeah. other people you yeah. just said it that was mm -hmm. a thought that crossed my mind was that active listening mm -hmm. if we take the approach of active listening in our nation everywhere that we are thinking strange things or, or hard things just taking the time to listen mm -hmm. before we respond mm -hmm. but trying to understand the other person's perspective I think we can really meet in the middle and find ways to say well I know where you're coming from now right. now I understand mm -hmm. right and how can we come together and make it better right. so this is a great great um, mm -hmm. lesson really really I love the cultural and generational diversity lesson. But I want to talk a little bit about ageism. I know we've touched on mm -hmm. it a little bit and some of the things, but have you experienced it? And I know you talked about technology earlier. I didn't right. know if you want to speak to that or something else. I, I'll speak to a, an experience that I had. Um, it was in a job interview where I was actually interviewing um, a couple people um, with a team of that a team that I used to work with in a different county mm, in a okay. different life <laughs> so um, <laughs> and uh, one of the candidates um, looked up at at it was me and uh, there was a gentleman he was probably and he was in his 40s I was in my 40s when this occurred and um, she looked at me and said I think I can relate to the kids better because I am closer in age to them, so I think that we'll have more fun with the activities that I, they do with me. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, that I remember sitting there listening to that going, just having a very, um, it, it was a very difficult experience not to react to that because I wanted to. But I was like, I'm here for a reason. and. Um, that is something I think people sometimes they say things and I don't think that they realize how they're being heard mm -hmm. and what those words mean. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. and that's something I think it's it's difficult. And and in this in this learning, you know, experience here that we're all dealing with, please let us know if we can say something better because yeah. I'm open to that yeah. because I want to make sure that I'm not you know putting anybody down. Yeah. And I am being loving and caring. That's huge right. for me. Yeah. But that was something that, that's always stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Even though that was like 15 years ago when mm -hmm. that happened. Yeah. That, that's, that's 
it's real in my mind because yeah. I was just like, this was, it, it felt very intentional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The positives to that, I'd say, you know, it kind of makes you stronger and helps mm -hmm. you to treat other people better mm -hmm. than the way you were treated, right? right. Some of these right. negative experiences. I right. will share about ageism a little bit. When I was in the medical field, I was a teenager. Not, I was the older, 19. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know, the doctors, of course, were 40 and up. And sometimes I experienced uh, maybe someone thinking I didn't, I couldn't learn or had a lack of knowledge and it was just my perception but sometimes I, I could feel that and I had to prove myself and I understand that different age groups and different professions they may look at you and say you know in this particular area we have to have this right and you have to do it right the first time so there's different elements of, of our, ex our experience or what we're dealing with that we may experience ageism uh, or some sort of uh, feel like a negative uh, response but then that I, I gained understanding as uh, where I am right. I better get it right. I have right. patience to care for, right. so I had to um, level up and step up. Right. But I'll pass it on to you. Uh, well, Trish. you know, um, one of my experiences was um, as I was a stay-at-home mom for many years. So you know, I and as I've said, I you know, I I got married and then I went back to school and then I had my children. So um, so I was working, but then I decided to stay at home. Well then, after you know so many years at home, you think, hmm, mm. who's going to hire this old pup? Who's going to hire me when there's all these young kids coming out of school? And and um, uh, so that was that was a fear of mine um, that I was not going to be able to get a, a a job or the job that you know a job that I really wanted yeah. um, using my degree then. And that was, um, that was a fear of mine. And I was, you know, I got out there and I got into the workforce. And it, was, it was a little unfounded, I think, mm -hmm. that I, but um, I remember that it, it's just that ingrained. Once you get older, you're, you know, there's people coming up behind you that might be a little bit, you know, smarter, quicker, whatever. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that, 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 was an, that was an experience I had. But, um, yeah, and yeah. so you answered this last question that age, ageism can be hurtful. It's yeah. hurtful to others, and so we, it's definitely a, a great time in our lives to just mark uh, a place to watch what we say, mm -hmm. take some careful thought to how we treat one another mm -hmm. with that, what that love, respect, and belonging, so that we can even approach those maybe what they call hard conversations, mm -hmm. which are needed to, to meet common ground. It's so true. Those hard conversations, so they're so uncomfortable to have, but we learn so much from them. Mm -hmm. We have a better understanding for one another. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully um, that's something that helps us to grow together. Mm -hmm. um, it, like you said, you said before, it, we have a lot of tough times right now. We're all, you know, it feels like we're being divided. Mm -hmm. But when we have these conversations, hopefully mm -hmm. that brings us together and, and that understanding help hopefully heals us yes lots mm -hmm. of healing is mm -hmm. needed and so uh, that's a great place to kind of move forward and, and let you know some more about our why show we we do thank you all for watching today but i want to go to trent really quick that's just going to mm -hmm. tell you more about the episodes coming up yeah and then we'll close out uh, absolutely the wonderful thing about day tv is that they actually um give you an opportunity to watch these shows um over and over so we have already uh, live taped our first two shows and now we're completing our third. But the wonderful thing is that you can still watch those other shows on Day TV. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you some of the dates and times or the times of, uh, of, in the, of in the, within the month that you can watch it. So um, obviously our live tape is every third Tuesday at 3 p.m. Um, but um, you can also watch our shows that will be played um, every second Wednesday at 10 p.m. So if you're a late night person, you can catch it then. Um, every third Friday at 12 p.m. at noon, right? Um, and then Thursdays, every Thursday at 3 p.m., it's also shown. And um, you'll be able to see episode one, episode two, and then coming up here probably in the next few weeks, you'll be able to see this episode again if you'd like to watch it over. So um, I'm, really, uh, I'm really grateful to Day TV for uh, allowing us to do that and to keep 
sh um, showing the um, our shows and and um, it's very exciting to be able to uh, share this information with with our community absolutely yeah. so we just want to thank you all thank you all for watching today um, our podcast will now be available on YouTube on the Goodwill Easter Seals page sometime next week we're looking at Wednesday so thank you all for watching and tuning in and we hope that you just stay well and encouraged all right good afternoon and welcome to the Y 